NASA might start studying sex in space. Wow, the alliteration on that is just chef's kiss. I was driving the other day and I heard a DJ on the radio talking about sex in space and how NASA is talking about studying it now. And I was like, well, for sure, I would like to cover that, especially because I just read this book, Packing for Mars by Mary Roach. No, I'm not sponsored by her or anything, but there's a specific chapter, The Three Dolphin Club Mating Without Gravity. I remember reading this entire chapter about how little this has been studied and why we really should be looking into it now. So some of the stuff that I'm gonna talk about in this video, I am pulling from the book, so thank you to Mary for writing, seriously, one of the best books I've ever read. But let's get into the headlines. So scientists are saying that NASA should embrace space sexology, and apparently, according to a rep from NASA, they're open to it. NASA insists that no humans have had in space yet. This, of course, is kind of hard to prove or disprove, but there have been no studies into human sex and sexual activities in a low gravity environment. And researchers from Canada are now saying this needs to change as more civilians go into orbit. So they're calling on space organizations to embrace the space sex discipline. That sounds like safe sex discipline, wow. Of course, I mean, intercourse is going to be crucial for the future colonization of other worlds like Mars. So understanding the hanky-panky and how it will work in a low gravity environment is essential to the success of deep space missions and building off-world settlements. This is according to the academic team from Concordia University in Montreal. You guys, this is for science and this is like legit stuff. I'm worried about the comments section in this video. Please don't bring up any space. Nope, I can't even go there. Nope. While we can leave the longer duration missions to professional astronauts, more civilians are going into orbit and some want to be part of that 62 mile high club. In fact, I just heard the other day that now Pete Davidson can be added to the list of those who will go on a blue origin rocket into space. I already feel like some of you guys are going to be like, who cares, who cares? But the point, the point is that as more civilians and more well, he's not really a normal person, but more everyday people have access to space, especially when they wanna to have tourism in space and make those future space hotels. This will be an important topic to know more about. This is like a really taboo subject for NASA. They have avoided the question of sex between astronauts, having previously categorically insisted that no humans have ever had sex in space. Now, according to this article, NASA recently admitted that it might be time to start investigating this beyond just using small animals for their studies. And interestingly enough, NASA doesn't specifically address sex in its rules of conduct. According to this chapter in Packing for Mars, NASA instead has an astronaut code of professional responsibility, which includes a vague Boy Scout oath style pledge, quote, we will strive to avoid the appearance of impropriety. <laughs> So Mary writes in this book, to her, that means just don't get caught. Through an experiment from 1988, a British sexologist, never said that word before, concluded that without gravity, it could be difficult or impossible for the ovum to enter and make its way along the fallopian tube. So there's another idea of just sending rats into space and seeing if they could do it do it successfully. In 1979, they did just that. The Soviet Space Agency sent some rats into an unmanned biosatellite. None of the females came back to Earth pregnant, though there were signs conception had taken place. So this is really interesting. This study suggests that certain early phases go awry. April Ronka is quoted in the book. She's an OBGYN who studied mammalian pregnancy and birth and zero gravity at NASA Ames. And she's quoted saying, that is perhaps maybe because the placenta can't form, maybe the uterus can't have proper implantation, any step along the way could be compromised by zero gravity in ways that we haven't foreseen, we know nothing. Ronka says she really thinks it just comes down to priority, not prudery. She said, quote, we don't know much about the effects of weightlessness on any of the body's basic systems, bone, muscle, and cardiovascular. We know even less about the brain. Reproduction has just not been high on the list, but maybe now it will be. 
And according to this book, the last significant NASA mammalian study was supposed to be in 2003. So it's definitely long overdue. So I wanna know from you guys in the comments, do you think that this actually deserves some real studying and some funding and actually taking it pretty seriously? It definitely makes sense to me that this is something that should be looked at and it's kind of crazy to realize how little it has been studied so far. So I think that, you know, there's some very good points, especially as we do have more of a, you know, tourism space industry emerging really studying and understanding this stuff. And of course, if we want to colonize Mars and make that happen successfully, we gotta know how to do it. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please make sure to like it. If you're new to the channel, please make sure to subscribe to Ellie in Space. You don't wanna miss anything. And thanks for watching.